How badly does a self-proclaimed millionaire tech YouTuber have to mess up to not just end up on CoffeeZilla's hit list, but completely destroy his career with just one video? I bet that if I were to get arrested and go to jail, the price of million token would skyrocket. It ended this guy's career. It destroyed his reputation. More importantly, what would drive a once credible and wholesome member of the YouTube tech community to throw his entire career away for a quick buck? And why would he make everything worse by attacking CoffeeZilla? Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today, we'll be looking over the dreadful demise of one of YouTube's most infamous tech channels, the Tech Lead. A man who let his ego and greed get the better of him in the worst way possible. Tech lead, aka Patrick Xu, started his YouTube journey in 2016. He focused his videos on his experience as a Google employee. However, his connection to YouTube was deeper than most, since he was the tech lead for YouTube's iPhone app. Back then, Patrick gave his viewers a unique glimpse into life at a prestigious tech company through his Dana Life videos. Cool things about working at Google is that you have access to every one of their offices in the world. I'll see coworkers taking a trip, maybe to New York or to some other country. So let's check it out. I wanted to show it to you guys. And he offered technical advice in which programming languages aspiring software engineers should learn to enhance their skills. The most important thing is to always keep learning. Here's the key answer. Think of the companies that you want to work for and go to their jobs website and look up what requirements they're asking for. While the majority of Patrick's content was professional in nature, there were times when he didn't take himself too seriously and showed a more jovial side. Um, the feedback has been uh, fairly negative up to this point. Are you sure you want to waste my time with this? I just want to make sure that we're using our time productively. Uh, I value your time. What's uh? So what's, uh, what, what, what is this supposed to be here? Patrick's unparalleled insight into the tech world, deadpan demeanor, and occasional comedic outbursts drew viewers in by the tens of thousands. Some looked to him as a useful resource for furthering their tech careers, while others simply enjoyed his strange mannerisms on camera. But the unifying factor behind the community Patrick built was his simple yet unorthodox approach to tech content. Unfortunately, Patrick's time as a Google employee would come to an end sometime in 2017 which later forced him to find employment at Facebook in May of 2018. However, due to reasons that will be made clear later in the video, Patrick would be fired from Facebook a little over a year later. Out of a job and stripped from the titles that once defined him, Patrick was forced to seek other revenue sources and decided his YouTube community was his best bet. He was very aware of the impact his content had on aspiring engineers and sought to monetize his audience in every way possible. Despite no longer having his prestigious job title at Google, Google, that didn't stop him from using it to boost his various marketing efforts. Patrick started by enlisting all his early vlogs and began selling the first season for $20. When I first started making my YouTube channel, I talked about all sorts of different topics and later on I would take down these videos. While there was technically nothing wrong with him monetizing his old catalog, this would serve as the first step in TechLead's journey to squeeze every single penny out of his viewers. In the following months, TechLead shifted his content from purely educational to marketing videos geared towards showing off how wealthy he was as a software developer. A key indicator of this shift in priorities was the addition of as a millionaire in the title of his videos and the promotion of different training programs in the description of his videos. Back then, no one had thought twice about Patrick's ever-increasing push to monetize his viewers since he had built up a reputation as a down-to-earth engineer with his prior vlogs. Sadly, Patrick's reputation was about to take a turn for the worse as someone in this community decided to take a closer look at what exactly he was promoting. On the 8th of November 2019, a YouTuber by the name of Trend Black published a video titled Tech Lead and Germatech, The Worst of the Tech Industry, which meant to showcase and criticize the unsavory parts of Tech Lead's businesses. Do you want to learn how to become a sellout? As an ex-Google, ex-Facebook, ex-married millionaire tech lead, this man sells snake oil with enough affiliate marketing to set off an ad blocker. I used to watch a lot of Joma Tech. I mean, I even sent him this email. But times have changed, and today I'll show you why Joma Tech, Tech Lead, and their products are utter garbage. Trend went on to expose how Tech Lead and Joma Tech had teamed up to copy the product of their former sponsor, Algo Expert, while offering an inferior product. It's been brought to our attention that for the past week or so, there's been this domain out there that is using the Algo Expert brand, but that isn't algoexpert.io. And when you type that domain or URL in your browser, you get redirected 
to some completely different website that we are in no way affiliated to. However, Trend's issues weren't with the plagiarism, but with the fact that we're only reviewing questions from Leaked Code's Code's website and charging people $100 for it. My problem is that if you're gonna fuck people out of $100, couldn't you guys at least make something that would help them? So their product, if you don't know, is basically an explanation of 50 popular interview questions, which doesn't sound too bad. That sounds like a decent product, but let's check it out. So the first problem here. Yep. So if we look at the screen here, it's a validate binary search tree. See, right off the bat, these questions are just stolen straight from lead code. The problems didn't stop there, as Trent pointed out the absurd conditions in TechLead's refund policy. Let's look at this refund policy. If you are dissatisfied for any reason, we offer a 14-day refund period for purchases if less than 40% of the total course material has been viewed. However, in order to qualify for a refund, you must submit proof that you did the work in the course and it did not work for you. Notice how they kind of trap you into this impossible scenario. So you must submit proof that you actually did the work in the course. So if you don't do the course, no refund. How do you prove that? Do you literally have to get rejected from an interview? While Trent's criticism of the course was mild at best and could have easily been solved, Patrick decided to take a vastly different approach and filed a false copyright strike to silence the critic. By the 12th of November 2019, Trent would make a follow-up video to let viewers know why the first video was taken down. Around 400 upvotes, I started getting a lot of messages and comments on my email, on my Instagram, on Reddit that says, dude, tech lead copyright strike you. So I check and I go back to my video and it says, your video has been removed due to a copyright strike from Patrick Shu, also known as the tech lead. Trin also shared a message he received from Patrick that Bordline threatened him to quote, not make enemies. I received a message from tech lead himself. Tech lead here, a bit of friendly advice. Don't create enemies. It doesn't do you, me, or our community any good. Regarding Clement and me, it's such a mess. I'd rather not air our dirty laundry in the public to mostly uninterested people. It was mostly a boring story and we're friends and competitors. Along with presenting a now-deleted comment that Patrick left on his former sponsor's video, Trent stated that it was blatantly trying to offer a sponsorship deal in exchange for his silence. Anyway, I think you have a nice YouTube channel. I checked out a few videos and there's great potential. Let me know if you ever want to be an affiliate for tech series and help improve people's lives instead of spending time criticizing. We do 50% revenue shared and would love to have your channel on board if you're interested. He is essentially offering to pay me in order for me to stop making negative opinions about him. In his response, Patrick would flat out lie about not being able to retract a copyright strike and would attempt to justify his horrible business practices by saying no one else in the industry could offer the same insight as he did. Reading, I can't retract a copyright strike. I recommend if you wish to criticize me, simply remove the imagery of me and re-upload. The knowledge I have to share is something almost no one in the industry will do. Have a good one and let me know if you ever want to promote our stuff. Instead of taking a hard look at the subpar course he was selling, Patrick was fixated on the financial gain and his status as an ex-Google developer. He had zero tolerance for criticism and would go to any length to sweep it under the rug, even going as far as deleting negative reviews on his subreddit. I got this comment from someone who actually bought and paid for Algo Pro. Too long didn't read. It just says that Algo Pro sucks. But what struck me as interesting is his first sentence here. He said he posted it on the TechLead subreddit, but it was then removed. Now TechLead's the moderator of that subreddit, so it's clear to me that he removed this review simply because it was negative even though it was completely honest. So I can only conclude that the reason he removed my video was because it was a negative review. Working at a large tech company inflated Patrick's ego to a point that no form of negative criticism was valid and everyone that he came across owed him the highest level of respect. Just take a look at the comment he left on a channel of someone he called a friend. Let me reply to this whole domain issue. Clement got greedy and decreased the affiliate commission percentage. In any case, stop being a crybaby. This is nothing personal. We just helped a student land triple offers at Facebook, Google, and Apple through our mentoring. And don't forget, respect the tech lead. Fortunately for Tren, Patrick would see reason and remove the copyright strike on his channel. But sadly, that wasn't the end of their interaction. On the 29th of April 2020, Tren made yet another video featuring Patrick. But this time, the issue wasn't a copyright strike. It was doxing. I wanted to inform you that I will be responding to your serious and false allegations by publishing a social media post calling you out. I will use both our full names so we're not hiding behind a nominee. Remember, TechLead only has my full name and my information because he falsely copyright struck me, right? It's understandable if you wanna defend yourself online, but I really hope you don't release my name online. I've kept this private for a reason. 
I have my face in my video, so clearly I'm not anonymous. So then he just goes on a huge tangent and basically says, I'm gonna dox you if you don't take your video down. Good luck. While Patrick didn't follow through with the post, he added in doxing Trent by giving his full legal name to another creator he criticized, Matt Tran. Apparently Matt wanted revenge on Trent for making a critical video about him and reached out to Patrick for his details. After a series of threats, Matt released Trent's details in an article geared towards ruining his reputation and future job opportunities. Patrick's actions jeopardized a fellow creator's career prospects, making it nearly impossible for Trent to fight back alone. Thankfully, Trent had a really good friend willing to back him up, Coffeezilla. Hey guys, wanted to make a short video um, to speak up for a friend of mine who's been silenced and doxxed and blackmailed and threatened by two YouTubers who are much bigger than him and I feel like he doesn't have the platform to defend himself, both in terms of his audience reach and in terms of the fact that anytime he posts a video, it's immediately copyright striped. Coffee would go on to state his role in trying to prevent the doxing and confirm that Patrick was responsible for the entire situation unfolding the way it did. I asked Matt Tran if this is indeed where he got the information from. Let me ask you, did did uh, Tech Lead get, or did you get the name from Tech Lead? Yeah. Yeah. To add insult to injury, now, Trin Black is put in a position where his full name has been doxxed due to YouTube's absurd copyright system, due to Tech Lead's absurd abuse of the system. But now, now after posting a video about it, that video was then falsely taken down by Tech Lead. The video that Trin Black posted had zero footage of Tech Lead in it. And guess what? Tech Lead claimed that video, so no one can see it. Coffeezilla's video would go on to become a catalyst for more people hearing about the story, which forced Patrick to retract his copyright strikes and Matt to give an apology. However, Patrick wouldn't be so humble as to recognize the error of his ways and made a video titled, My Response, Addressing My Haters as a Millionaire, Trend Black Matt Tran Drama. I can come up here and give this amazing speech that would totally justify my existence and make me look like this pure, innocent angel but I have a feeling that my haters are still not going to accept that. Some people, they just don't like the way I look. It's a personal thing. They just don't like my appearance. Maybe I remind them of somebody who wronged them in the past. Maybe they're jealous of my success or jealous of my failures. And there are a lot of people out there who are simply racist. From the start, Patrick saw nothing wrong with his toxic behavior and framed the hate he rightfully received as racism. Say goodbye to your bad habits a delightful way with today's sponsor, The Fume, the award-winning device that's all natural. At the start, I wasn't sure what to think about it, but after trying the maple peppercorn for the first time, I was completely sold. Instead of using electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of using vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of using harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get the deal. Experience the ultimate relaxation with fume's adjustable airflow dial and fidget friendly design. Perfect for easing stress and anxiety as you reshape your habits. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume is served over 300,000 customers and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code INTERNETANARCHIST to get your free fume base when you order the journey pack. It's the all new magnetic stand for your fume device. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com and use code INTERNETANARCHIST or scan the QR code on screen to get your free fume base when you order the journey pack today. With that being said, let's get back into the video. After another seven minutes of stroking his ego, Patrick would finally address the doxing and sadly, it was more of the same. But anyways, I did want to quickly address the whole Tran Black, Matt Tran drama. I don't know if you've been caught up with this, but you know, the story is essentially that Tran Black has been accusing Matt Tran of doxing him and somehow my name got dragged into all of this. His whole channel is based on roasting other people. His two biggest videos have been on roasting me, trolling me, and, and I believe that he basically just dragged my name into this mess because he knew that my channel was bigger. I have more subscribers. People don't really know who Matt Tran is. If he wants the views, he needs to come after me. Zero accountability, self-awareness, or regard for his audience and critics. These scumbag qualities had gotten Patrick on CoffeeZilla's radar once, and it was about to happen again for the second time. Unfortunately for Patrick, he wouldn't get away scot-free this time. On the 1st of July 2021, Patrick would publish a video announcing his latest money-making opportunity, Million Token, a cryptocurrency he claimed would go to the moon. Today marks the start of a brand new journey for you, for me, for all of us. I'm glad you could join us because today 
we are launching a brand new digital currency. The currency's name, Million Token. And so Million Token is literally a million dollar opportunity. I'm putting a million dollars of my own money into this to get it started, but this coin can skyrocket in price. It can take us to the moon. So what is Million Token? What's the concept? Well, it's like this. Million token is much like a stable coin. One token equals one US dollar. For million token, the supply is fixed. There's only one million tokens total worldwide. No more can ever be created as guaranteed by the smart contract code. Patrick would go on to make even more bold claims about the future of million token and desperately try to sell viewers on the potential value of this coin. The tokens start at an initial minimum base value of one token equals one US dollar. But the value can actually rise higher than that because there's only a total limited fixed supply of a million tokens total no more can ever be created patrick was banking on the claim that his tokens already had a one dollar valuation to incentivize viewers into buying and promoting the coin to inflate the value there was zero utility behind the token and patrick knew it that's why he was more focused on the upside if viewers were gullible enough to pay for it is this a decent store of value and I would say, well, yes, it seems like it is because it is a fixed total max supply, just 1 million tokens. You cannot create more. And so the token is deflationary in nature and over time, its scarcity should only increase, thus increasing the value of the coin. While there were some viewers that believed Patrick's claims without any critical consideration, others were more skeptical, with comments reading, so you're scamming? Does this coin create value or just make you rich? As well as, remember this video, this is the point you're going down. In the video description, Patrick left a link to the Million Token website, and audience members who took the time to look through were greeted by a very telling disclaimer. Million Token is a social experiment. By purchasing Million Token, you agree that you are not purchasing a security or investment contract and you agree to hold the team harmless and not liable for any losses or taxes you may incur. By Patrick's own admission, the Million Token wasn't a viable financial opportunity or store of value, but that reality didn't stop people from putting their hard-earned money on the line. Within the first two weeks of the token going live, the price soared over $250, with a trading volume of more than $120 million. In the short term, people were blinded by the potential to turn a quick profit. However, in the long term, the only person that would make that profit was Patrick. And CoffeeZilla was about to prove it. On the 7th of August 2021, CoffeeZilla would return to expose Patrick's latest scam with the video titled, Tech Lead Scammed You With Million Token as a millionaire. Let's talk about Tech Lead's million token. What is it? What does it do? Who's it helping? I'm gonna walk you through all of it. And also, not to give too much away, but I will at the end of this video also crunch the numbers and show you exactly how much money Tech Lead has made with this coin. And the answer is millions of dollars. To give viewers a comprehensive scope of what exactly was going on, CoffeeZilla outlined what Million Token was and how Patrick blatantly lied to his audience while promoting it. He made it sound like he was really investing in this coin, but the reality was there was never a chance he could lose money. Number two, he was careful with his words to avoid calling this an investment, but also makes it sound like you'll get rich. Three, he's been siphoning money into shell accounts. And four, he's been running ads in which he lies about this cryptocurrency. Coffee went on to provide proof that Patrick never invested a million dollars into the token. In fact, Patrick had only put $50,000 into the project while using money from buyers to make up the difference. From the blockchain, the tech lead did not put a million dollars into this. In actual fact, he started with the entire supply. This is million token. He was given the entire supply at the very launch. He didn't pay for it. Instead, as he sold million token, he used that money that you guys bought it with to back the coins. The premise behind Patrick's so-called opportunity was a bold-faced lie, but even that was only the tip of the iceberg. To further push his scam token to a wider audience, Patrick ran ads to promote million token while refusing to disclose he was the one who created the coin. He got an ad for milliontoken.org, which featured Tech Lead's video shilling it. And what's shocking about this, besides the fact that he's advertising his own channel and this coin, is that he never discloses in the video that he created the coin. Instead, he pitches it as if he just found it randomly. Coffee continued by exposing just how much Patrick had taken from the audience. So I traced all the transactions this guy made in a big spreadsheet um, and then just categorized who they were to, who they were from. This is for all the USDC pools, the multi million token pools. And according to my calculations, Tech Lead has pulled out and siphoned into a bunch of shell accounts a total of 
million dollars. After discovering the truth behind Million Token, CoffeeZilla would confront Patrick on his dubious claims and had this to say. So the first part is he confirms that he did just put in $50,000. He later says, I'm putting a million dollars of my own money into this to get us started. That he believed he deployed another 50,000, but this was from what you guys spent on Million Token. So that is confirmed. Patrick defended his scheme by claiming the community was valuable and therefore not a Ponzi scheme. Is this a Ponzi scheme? It depends on whether you think the community has value. If you think marketing community and brand have no value, then certainly this would be zero sum. Wow. But I think you can just look at Coca-Cola or Nike and see that brands do have value. Hey, th those brands have products, guys. Now, you'd think after getting exposed for lying, manipulating, and stealing from his audience, that Patrick would at least keep his mouth shut. Unfortunately, his pride and disdain for criticism wouldn't allow that, as he retaliated in the most vindictive way possible. By the 11th of August 2021, CoffeeZilla covered Patrick's now-deleted response video, as well as going over how he got doxxed and was called racist. Ladies and gentlemen, tech leaders responded. Brace yourselves. He's gone full damage control, panic mode, including calling me racist for exposing his scam. In his typical fashion, Patrick deflected criticism by saying other people were complaining and being victims. He goes around basically calling projects scams and maybe he generates some good press for himself. He virtue signals and then people think that he's a hero for calling everything a scam. Life is a scam. Okay, he's a hero. This is really just victim mentality. Thankfully, Patrick would admit that he lied about the initial investment in Million Token. And you know, to clarify, okay, when I started the project, I bootstrapped with 50,000 USD coins paired to 50,000 million tokens. That's exactly what I said. So he's admitting it. He did not put in a million dollars of his own money. He used your money. However, that was the only responsible thing Patrick did throughout the video, as he spent the rest of it virtue signaling and putting himself on a pedestal. And so it's kind of like Genghis Khan, Napoleon, or Captain Blackbeard, these iconic historical figures. And you know, some of these people were even villains. Sure, you could say that Captain Blackbeard was a scammer. He even killed people. And yet they are legends in history. And there is a value with these people. The delusion didn't stop there, as Patrick assumed facing any consequences for his actions would raise the value of million token and make him a legend. I bet that if I were to get arrested and go to jail, the price of million token would skyrocket because it would just be legendary. CoffeeZilla would close out the video by exposing how vengeful Patrick was to dox him by posting already debunked information on Twitter. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot. Like, yeah, he also tried to dox me. Yeah, I almost left that out of this piece. Using an old debunked piece of blackmail that we talked about in this video, remember this is the thing Swag Academy tried to catch me out on, but uh, retracted immediately because it's literal blackmail and a dox. The way Patrick reacted to CoffeeZilla's video was identical to what he did with Trent Black. Blackmailing, slandering, and doxing someone who presents genuine criticism, all the while making himself out to be the hero. Shortly after CoffeeZilla's exposed videos, viewers began waking up to just how deceptive Patrick was, but it was already too late. The price of Million Token had dropped by over 8 percent and as of this recording, it sits at a price of $1.5. Slowly but surely, Patrick's once loyal audience began losing interest in his channels and stopped watching his content. As the views dwindled, his subscriber count stagnated and dislikes increased. Patrick decided to make an exit by deleting a majority of his previous uploads. However, YouTube wouldn't be the only place Patrick would lose all credibility. In May of 2022, Patrick would make a series of unhinged tweets about his time interviewing people at Google, reading, So when I used to conduct interviews for Google, I rejected all women on the spot and trashed their resumes in front of them. It didn't take long for the statement to make headlines, and for most Silicon Valley companies to blacklist him. Patrick started out as a positive and relatable figure in the tech space, freely giving out valuable insight and advice to younger developers. Now, he's telling them that they're nothing but grunt workers if they pursue that line of work. Software engineering ultimately is kind of a, it's not exactly high status work. High status work would be the type of job that you would want to do even if you were rich. Something like, say, directing a movie, being an actor, maybe being a novelist or a painter, something that would get you some social credibility. Money, status, and his pride were the only things that mattered to Patrick, and he was willing to throw everything away for that. Sadly, money is the only thing he has left, since no one else is willing to touch his brand or name with a 10-foot pole. 